Hello fellow map makers. Welcome to this week's live mapping session. Hope you're all fine. Say hello to the cat. She's just walking by and getting in the way of my screen. So just on time, Aza, get people get to see your tail. Come on. Come up here. Come on. Come on, cat. There we go. So people can see at least your back as well. So let's say hi, Aza. There you go. Uh, too much cuddling. Good. Uh, <laughs> so much for this uh, starting uh, live stream professionally and without distractions. Well, cats always get in the way. That's their business, isn't it? Yeah, she was curled up on the radiator just a second ago, but decided to join me for the start of the live stream. Okay. Good. What's our topic uh, tonight? Uh, we want to do some city mapping in our series of uh, following the second year of the Cartographer's Annual. We've got uh, the big exa well, the example map for City Designer 3 that was included uh, with that annual because it was the time that City Designer was released. And uh, I want to just have another go at getting a city map, but recreating that type of map that we had in that example, so people can see another city making in progress and get to see the tools from City Designer, th three, City Designer 3 straight away. Good. And uh, we'll uh, cover a few things that we looked in detail at lately when we're looking at streets and house styles and uh, we're going to see these in actions, perhaps modify some stuff for ourselves and so on. This will tie in nicely to that te more technical video we had couple sessions ago, or a few, I think it was before my holiday. So, if you have any questions during the session, post them in the chat, as always. Sue and Remy are there to answer stuff in the chat, or forward anything to me that I can show on screen. And so we can make this a little bit more interactive than just me talking all the, all the time. <laughs> yes. Good, uh, so we do have our example map on screen here, but let's start a fresh one. We're gonna go classical up to the file toolbar and click the new map button, not save our current example here, and then go to the map type cities. And this week we're gonna stick with the desired settings myself, because we want to adjust the size of our map and then we'll have a look for I'm not going for any of the annual styles, but instead the style we have on screen here is the bitmap A style. With, that comes with City Designer 3. And we're gonna stick with the imperial measurements here, feet, and gonna click next. And here's our screen to set them the map size. And as usual, this is in rebuild units. We would just want to do a small town and so on. Yeah, but we've got to make it a bit larger than the default. So something like 1500 feet, which comes to uh, by f about 500 meters. And to keep the screen dimensions fitting for our screen here, we're going to uh, stay uh, with our uh, keep a uh, 4 to 3 ratio ratio and do 1200 feet in height. Next up we could go in and change the background and stuff but I'm gonna stick with that here and just instead click finish and save our map in our video stream folder and call this new town. And here's our empty map with a green grassy background where we can start our map on. So what's the first step I want to do? The first step I usually do is some uh, geography of the map, some, some stuff that defines the layout of the city, like if I was doing uh, drawing a hilly area, put in some big hills, and uh, what I'm thinking here is 
uh, town on the junction of two rivers. And so that's going to be the main defining geographical feature. And we're going to draw in a river. For that we go to our Drawing Tools button and right click that or left click that. And then we get all the names of the tools. I often work with the dis samples turned off because I've uh, created most of these and know what I mean by the text and um, by the names. So it's simple for me to find stuff. But if you need more of a visual cue, um, you can just turn on the samples for the drawing tools and you can get to see a little preview of the stuff. I'm gonna scroll down here and I do have water tools here. So I'm gonna go for the smooth tool and now I'm gonna start drawing the river. I'm thinking of the big river here on the left and a smaller tributary coming in from the right. That's how my example map generally looks. And so I'm gonna start off by clicking the first point outside of the map border that attaches the first point here to this, uh, the map border edge. And then I'm gonna draw the main river bank. And here is gonna be my tributary coming off from the right. So this is the north bank of the tributary. And then make that not too wide. And then we're back to the main river. Draw until here. And then I'm gonna leave just a little bit on the further edge here. The river is supposed to be quite wide. And right click. And there's my river layout. Okay, looks like we are, we are into the cats versus dogs <laughs> discussion now on the chat. I'll not chime into that. I like both, but I do have a cat, so I guess I'm a cat person. I'm gonna turn on the sheet effects so I can just immediately see how the map looks and uh, our campaign card of 3 plus is fast enough on modern computers to, so we can work quite easily with the effects turned off turned on normally and so it's better for you to see stuff directly on screen when I draw them. So we've got our geographical layout. What we could do, I'm imagining we have to have a little rise here, not a big hill or anything. That would be, uh, I'm imagining more of a flat landscape. But I wanted to put in a little contour line and have a look here. We do have some contours, brighter ones here. And they are, if I, Take a look here, where are my contours? City contour one, city contour two. And I do want them smooth, not with a, uh, a straight polygon. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click options and just turn this on smooth. Or what I could also do if I want to keep this tool around, I make a copy of this city contour two SM for smooth and then do the change that way I do have the choice now always between these two tools. Okay and I did uh, misclick there when I started the tool and I had a little bit of a nested command that's why this got interrupted. Let's just select this again and draw our contour here. So this is a general indication that they have a little rise in the landscape here. And we have a fairly sharp contour here at the moment. Might be okay because uh, we do want to indicate the contour line if I want to have a little bit of a smoother transition between the darker background and the brighter contour. I can 
use key extract properties on the contour and see it's actually on the same uh, sheet background. So what I could do, I could create a new sheet background contour. I want to keep background city for any streets and uh, similar stuff for the city interior. So I'm not going to use that for the additional um, <coughs> transition. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put an edge fade on here. Oh, not an edge, an edge fade inner actually. Oh, with say 20 feet transition. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use move to sheet on that contour, press D for do it and put it on the background contour sheet. And now we do have the softer transition. Why didn't, couldn't I just assign that to the background sheet? That's because the dark green background is on the background sheet and sheet effects apply, apply to the sheet uh, on the whole and not individual entities on the sheet. And so uh, edge rate would have just been applied to the edge of the whole green background and not just the contour. That's why I needed the extra background contour sheet. All right, that's my geographical land, uh, layout and now I'm going to go into the build up city area and usually I start out by defining the area if I do have uh, with a city wall or something like that in case the city has a wall but mine does or at least partially has so I want to draw a city wall for that I'm going to go into the drawing tools again and here we do have a wider and a more narrow city wall. So I'm going to grab the wider one and start by drawing a city wall along the bank of the major river, circling the slight rise where the city is located on. And my idea is that um, the city wall is actually under construction and not quite finished. So uh, they're still building it. I haven't quite managed to close uh, the area. And so I'm going to stop drawing the city wall at this point. Turn on sheet effects or do a refresh so we can see the sheet effects. And or what would be um, before they were drawing the city wall that might have a palisade or a moat and that's what I'm gonna put in here in the area where the wall isn't finished yet. So I'm gonna go in and choose the dike here. Use the endpoint modifier F5 to connect it to the end of the wall. And then complete this section until I reach the river. And I'm also gonna complete the circle with the dike on the southern edge of the city. Go so that's um, something I like to do and uh, stuff structure cities, towns are not fixed things in time. they uh, change. They, people are always working on things. there will be construction going on, there will changes be ongoing and the map can always only pick one point in time and in this case I'm going to pick a point where there's a big change in the city that they are got this, uh, the um, wealth to build a actual stone city wall or maybe an external threat has shown up that requires a stronger defense so they are in the process of building this. And what I do also want is a palisade on top of the dike and we have a nice tool for that. If I Go in here, we have a palisade tool. And again, I'm going to use the F5 endpoint modifier. And then I'm going to trace the existing dike so I can put the palisade right on top. And for that, I'm going to press T, select the dike I want to trace, the starting point, 
and then follow until the end. And then I'm going to do the same down here. I have to re uh, start again there because it's a separate entity. And there's my palisade on the dike. Was actually um, is uh, probably put should point a gap later in there for the gates and stuff. But that's something I can always do later. So I'm gonna keep it like this at the moment. But what I want to add now is some towers on the city wall. And I've got a tool for that as well. I've got the city wall tower here. And I'm going to use the F9, the on modifier, to put it exactly on the wall. Then I can define the size of my tower by moving the mouse. Refresh. And there you can see. That's actually perhaps a little bit large for my taste. So I'm going to undo that and redo the tower smaller like this I like that better and then I'm gonna simply redo that and no oh, I can put in a few more towers along the edges Yeah. Ah, okay. What happened here? Um, well, we reached the map edge and our tool is probably set up to limit itself to the map edge and that way the tower got broken. How can we fix that? That's quite easy. I'm going to go into the tool drawing tool and uncheck restrict to map border. There's no big danger. We're going to go way outside the map border with one of the towers. And we do have a screen set up that covers everything going beyond the border. So it's safe to use the tower tool without the restriction. Now I've gone a bit, bit too large again. So I'm going to grab the tower again. and make it smaller and that's okay there's my city towers and what I'm going to do now I'm going to put in one more or what I can actually do I can copy an existing tower as well do it and put it here and that way I do have not two towers making up a gate where my main road can leave the city to the north. Okay, I could do the same thing for with round towers with the palisade, though I'd have to set up uh, a tool for that because I don't have any, any wooden towers, but you know, we could still simply change the fill style and the colors. But I'm thinking uh, round you know, for palisade something square so would be more appropriate so what i'm going to do instead i'm going to use the house tool to put a wooden building on top of the wall so i'm going to go into the house tool and choose this setting here for peaked roof and the shape is fine and then I'm going to do insert and I'm just going to draw a rectangular shape here then I'm going to do a copy of that there we go and because there wouldn't be a dike at the point where the 
gate is, I'm gonna break a gap into the uh, dike. So I'm gonna choose the break tool, select my dike. I can safely click that here because it's below the, the palisade. So when I click something, I only get one entity selected as with the break command. It always picks the lowest of the entities there. So this way I'm gonna put a break in here and you can see it's put the break correctly into the dike and not into the palisade. And I leave the palisade in here showing, depicting the gate between the two towers. That's pretty nice, but I want one more gate. I think there would be probably be one going off to the east here. So again, I'm going to grab the house tool. Put in one gate tower. This time I'm just going to redraw a second one because I want them to have a little bit at different angles. Could of course also copy and rotate the other one, but it's be close enough by going by eye the, the same size. It will be look fine. And again, I'm going to put a break into the city dike. So it's our general shape for the map. So next up, I'm going to put in some roads or streets. Gonna click the road tool. Default tool is fine. And I'm going to start here. Put in the main north-south road in here. I'm just going to put it right across the river. I guess there will be a bridge here. And I can always, if I want to show the bridge in a different way than just by putting the road over the river, I can always change that later. Put a gap into the road or draw a bridge across it. We'll see how that goes later. Then I'm going to pick a street coming in from the east. Here's our center of town. Then I'm going to put in some branching streets. Five modifier to connect it exactly where the other one is. Yeah, I'm going to just cross, go down here, and then I'm going to put in a little bit narrow, or this looks like, now looks like cobbled street, so I might put in some dirt streets. So I'm going to grab the 10 foot brown road tool and put in some further streets. Not to. No, I don't have a very, uh, big plan here. I'm just putting down some streets fairly randomly. I guess I'm used to European medieval cities you know, tend to have a very organically grown uh, street layout. Of course, there were also pretty uh, much planned streets and towns, but they quite often they've been built over over the uh, years and centuries, so you don't see that much of the original layout anymore. But you could also, of course, go for a more planned look and put in a rectangular grid of streets. But here I'm going with a pretty organic layout. Now I have a little tiny thing that I don't quite like. Basically, my dirt roads are on top of the cobbled roads, as you can see here, and this will obviously not be the case. The main road would be cobbled all along its length, probably. So what I'm going to do, I'm front, I'll front the cobbled streets, and for that I'm going to use the bring to front command. I can work with that ordering system because they're all on the same roads sheet. So I can order them on that. 
So I'm going to click front by layer with all the streets, but then I'm going to combine selections not by fill style and with the F2 I'm going to choose fill style of this entity. And now we've got only six entities left selected, press D for do it. And now my cobble, oops, zoom, cobbled streets are on top of the dirt streets. Yeah, the um, okay. Everyone has got a comment about the chimney on the uh, house tools here. That's um, as you can see here. That's uh, indeed the house style does have a chimney added to the roof, and you can change that in the settings. Here, um, Phil's top symbol wooden chimney. That's uh, how where you select where the chimney symbol gets added. And I probably should have uh, turned that off for the, the wooden towers I put, I put on the city wall. But what I can also always do, or have a go at least to delete these later. I can't delete this just by um, erase and select this here. You can see it selects the whole building. That's because it's grouped. So I'm going to go cancel. But what I can do, I can unlock my... Uh, groups and now these are selectable individually there we go one here but not these walls and the dike got two entities selected press D for do it and there's my chimneys on the towers gone I'm gonna go in and do the same here one two and then I'm going to lock my groups again, and then I can move and uh, copy buildings more easily in one go. Good, so we've got our layout here of uh, streets. So next up, I want to place down some houses. And this is obviously quite a lot of work to do, to fill everything with house sim symbols or house uh, groups. But for that, we do have our street tools. And here I'm uh, going to right click the random street uh, command. And there we do have the streets set up, wooden and thatched roofs for this style. And here I'm going to keep it fairly simply and first fill lots of stuff with just the house roofs and perhaps go in later and do some individual adjustments but I want to uh, finish this city quickly so I'm just gonna grab the first the just the wooden buildings these are my better buildings as opposed to the thatched roofs so I'm gonna make this my uh, richer or uh, more affluent city quarters so I'm thinking the upper here or upper left is the uh, higher class areas, more wealth, and then as you go east and south, it's going to be poorer districts, and I'm going to change to more thatched roofs in those areas. So I'm going to then left click the random street tool, select one of the streets, and um, okay, I think I have something set up oh yes again i've got the uh, had this recently as well uh, the houses are, should not be fixed on the right instead i want them want to select the side myself i'm gonna save the setting and redo this click on the left side here and then just put some buildings along quick and easy Gonna do the same thing for the main street. I should zoom in more closely. You can see that what I'm doing here. 
and I can also already see that I've covered up some roads here and for that I'm just gonna move the buildings off to the side a little bit. I could mess with the tools if I wanted to have the buildings to be smaller or larger or more closely to the together. But I'm going to stick with the default here for the moment. As always, I can move the mouse back and forth to get different random selection of buildings until I've got something that I like. Go And now I'm going to switch over to the mix tool. So instead of just wooden, I'm going to go wooden and thatch. So I have both types of buildings. Again, I'm going to select the size site. Save this tool. And that way I simply get some thatched buildings mixed in with my wooden ones. Just takes a moment even with the tool, but as you can see we are filling up our city pretty quickly. Mm, that's I didn't hit the street there, so my house has got misaligned a bit. I can always cancel the command, undo as I need and restart stuff. Almost done on this side. With the uh, gaps you get in there, that's where on the corners where the program can't quite fit a building in there. You can always move the mouse to adjust that as you need. But you can also of course go in later and add individual buildings. If you choose smooth paths at uh, instead of the straight paths I've done here for the streets you get a little bit more it's a bit more easy because the uh, bends are not as tight oh okay yes I'm uh, was working a bit under my video thing oh, but I'll think I'll be fine in a sec moving out gonna leave off a bit of area space in here because I want to perhaps put in something a special building in there and for the southern bank on the river I'm gonna go all thatch for my tools Almost done. The last few houses here. And what I'm going to do for this street that's hugging the river fairly closely, I'm going to go into the tool road again and I'm going to choose the small wooden huts here. They are much set up to be drawn much smaller. I could make uh, what I mean, the gaps are fairly large between the huts though, so because it says wood huts loose. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save this as a new setting. Let's call it tight row. And go into the street settings. And here I've got the distance between the houses uh, fairly large. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go 5 by 10 instead. Yeah, that's nicer. Okay, and now I'm gonna 
Oh, can't it, did I have the setting again uh, off? Yeah, I think I have again. Yeah, somewhere. So at some point, my defaults all go, got set to just draw houses on the right of the street, which is obviously not what I want. What I'm also going to change here is going to change the roof type to make this a little more uh, simple, so I don't get the gabled roofs, but just straight ones. So there we go, and. Yeah, I've got the. But yeah, you can see it's putting uh, chimneys, uh, lots of chimneys on these, but they don't really fit on the uh, small ones. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to into the house settings, and going to grab the wooden style here and disable the chimneys. No chimney. And now, let's have a look, is that correct? I, it's, well, I do need to uh, say here in the which setting to use. Well, actually, we already had one of these uh, set up previously. That's the wood, no frill setting. So that's what I'm going to use. OK, and so let's have a look whether that was set up correctly. Yeah, and there you can see no more chimneys on the buildings. Good. So I've got my main areas filled with buildings. And now I can go in and put in some special stuff. So I'm going to go into the wooden houses here again. And I'm going to choose a little bit more complex building and I'm going to make a large garrison type of building. See some soldiers are stationed here and I just have to remember what's the correct setup here. Yeah, oh, it's looking good. There we go. That's a big roof. And then I'm going to go in and choose this roof type again and a simpler building. Put this in here. Let's have a look here. And then I'm going to go in and add some connectors here. Uh, this way I can. Choose a point within the house, the house edge, the next house edge, and then add this. And the same here, just a smaller one, could be the gate. And therefore, I've got a nice complex uh, building setup. Even if I could go in and say I want a tower on here on the edge, I can simply do that by going in the House tool again, choose perhaps the interior layout or the gabled layout and just put this on top, this area here. And yeah, that's one thing. If I put one building on top of the other, I lose the sheet effects again because um, the Sheet effects apply to the sheet as a whole and not to individual entities on the sheet. So what do I need to do if I want an extra shadow on this roof? So it shows that it's uh, its own or a higher building. I can put it on a new building sheet. So what I do I need, I do have these are on the buildings sheet. So let's add one called buildings. Hi. Move this down a little bit, there we go. And then again use move to sheet, select this roof, leave or do it on buildings high. Now I'm gonna go in and just grab these, these sheet effects and paste them over, copy them over to the new sheet. And there the tower has uh, its own outline and shadow. If I want to show that it's actually uh, somewhat higher than the buildings with the shadow as well, I can go in and 
lengthen that shadow. So let's say 20 feet. And there you can see it casts a longer shadow than the rest of the building. That way you can stack your buildings on top of each other, build multi-tire things that are where the roofs on top are smaller than the ones below. And construct your complicated buildings with the house tool. So that's one way to do complicated buildings. The other one is easier. We can just, of course, grab some of the symbols we have. For that, I'm going to do, uh, create some space here. I do want it to create a market area here anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase a few buildings and then go into the drawing tools and check out my square. Attach this to the existing streets with the on modifiers and there's my market square. And now I'm going to grab a building here, something that works well as a temple perhaps, and then I can go in. Uh, if I, this way it would align to the side. Oh, that's actually quite good, I, but I wanted it a bit larger, so I'm going to increase the size a little bit so it fits in here and then move it so the extension of the building goes into the market square. There, that looks good. And another bigger building here on this side. Size is fine. And that looks pretty good. Then perhaps something else here close to the bridge. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to erase these ones here and grab this one. I'm going to set back to its standard size. Mm, might still a bit, bit too large, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and put it in here. And then another building. These are these get larger as you go through the group of symbols. This is a collection, and you can cycle through it by hitting the tab key. That's good. Nice size. Nice. Two buildings on this side, and let's put another one, a smaller one, on this side. Good, so we've got some, uh, perhaps we want some other buildings down here. We can also, of course, switch to our a different catalog. We do have other building catalogs, of course. I've not, I've stuck to the wooden and thatched roofs in this one. So uh, I'm going to stick with the symbols as well. And here we've got some more elaborate thatched roof buildings. I want to put one in here next to the gate. This overlaps a little bit with the, the house here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this just slightly to the side. Set this no, is already at normal size. Oh, ha! Huh. We've got a building here that breaks the the street. Well, that's actually an error in that symbol definition. Let's have a quick look. If you want to check your take a look at the innards of a symbol? We can do this. Let's grab the last one we added. This this one here. And if I define the editing window for that, you can see a red line down here. This is a so-called control point and uh, that defines which uh, where it aligns to a street, the house, and you can set an option on that to cut the entity it aligns to. We use that for doors and dungeons, for example, and see it does have the option cut on insertion set, and this is wrong. So I'm going to turn this off and save this symbol and grab it from this style here 
and this way. It does not cut the street anymore. What it actually should do is set off from the um, from the street, and it, it didn't do that as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do this again, and what it should be doing is also offset from place point. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Sue tells me that uh, Remy actually corrected this one uh, already, so I'm not sure it might actually be in the um, in the current version of City Designer 3. I might not have the latest uh, fix for that in touch, but I'm not quite sure whether we already put that in there or not. So check out your own style, whether it's your fetched how similar here perhaps um, has a problem cutting streets, but we're put, gonna put it in the next patch in any case, if we haven't already. Good. So that's, I think, uh, enough demoing of the houses and buildings. What I do well, wanted to add is um, the road outside the city. That should be continuing off to the side of the map. Not cobbled anymore. That's gonna, just going to be dirt outside the uh, city walls. And then I was going to perhaps add something also just outside the city. Quite often you'd have something where people, if the, the gates were closed uh, for the night and people wouldn't be allowed in th uh, to the city after dark, you might have some, some place where people arriving late could stay. And so we're going to put a nice big inn or something here. See, this building is set up correctly already. It must have been that one symbol that had its control point wrong. We are. Good. And um, after perhaps adding a few more special buildings around the house, uh, around the town, I would then go on and add some vegetation stuff like gardens and fields. Let's have a look here. We do have uh, some uh, fields, should have some fields in here somewhere. No, we don't. We don't. We thought we had some fields defined. Terrain, city, background. No. Not that. Okay. I saw that. thought I saw that earlier. But no matter. We can always uh, define. Oh, there it is. It's just uh, zoomed out a bit strangely. There's our terrain fields tool. Uh, that's because I think the uh, sample width is so small. Just show up. Okay, um, and we wanted to use that to draw some fields outside the city. So for, for that I usually just outline some rectangular or polygonal areas inside the cities to show some fields. can also use this to um, draw some gardens inside the city wall and quite often in, in towns that enlarged the walls and had areas to spare there would be actually gardens and fields within the city area doesn't yeah, all need to be just inside uh, just outside the city but of course the main area the areas would be outside just for space reasons. Let's see, we could, you go, if you go, want to go in a little more detail, what I like to do is show plots or gardens for the um, houses by uh, lining or drawing the fields as gardens just below the buildings here. But that 
takes of course a little time because you also have to do that individually and I don't have the time to do that for the whole town tonight so I'm just gonna do it for block as an example sometimes I'll just do multiple ones together and there we have some garden plots and then we can go in and for example we have some hedge tools small three foot hedges using a bit of a fractal tool to make them look a little bit irregular Well, those will separate the vegetable plots. And uh, the, but the vegetation she um, sheet is actually above the buildings here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move it up. And so it's a bit long one. So it, they are below the roofs. And we could also add a little effects to that. There are currently no effects added here. We've got the trees, of course, with uh, much more effects. We're going to copy these to vegetation, but make the shadow much shorter. So look how that looks. Oh, well, that's looking good. See a bit dark outline, a bit of a shadow and a dark glow around the edges of the hedges, the edges of the hedges, yes. And let's go back and take some a little bit wider hedges to outline the fields outside the city. Okay, I what I, did I do there? Why this strange uh, look? That's because I chose the uh, closed one and not an open path like I was supposed to do. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to break this from here to here to get rid of the closing line. And let's have the open path instead of the closed one. And just do some separating sections between the different fields. That's looking pretty neat. Let's do a few more fields down here at the southeast corner. There, I forgot, forgot to put this in the corner here. So let's be, just do that manually. And again, grab some hedges to outline them. On modifier to connect the hedges together. Okay, well you can see how you could fill in the interior of some of the open areas in the city with the hedges and everything. I'm not gonna go into that much more, but what I'm gonna switch to trees now. See how look how the trees work in this style. These are also drawing tools, no not specific symbols. Kept fairly simple simple to make it easier on large scale maps. So I'm just gonna grab a city tree. Zoom in here and click a point and then define the size. You can see I've got my so basically a fractal circle. some vegetation trees and I can now just place more of this of the same size by just clicking where I want to put put them and it creates these nice tree shapes sitting on top of uh, the hedges and everything else and if, uh, if I want to change uh, the uh, size I can hold down control and to make it smaller and larger again if I want say a large 
tree here and then some smaller ones around. The only thing that happens, because they're all on the same sheet again, if you overlap them, they will get outlined and sheet effects applied as one entity, again, because they're all on the same sheet. But you can make use of that but to uh, actually make groves, larger areas, and so if you're a little, a little wood where you don't want to show individual trees, you can just put some of these shapes on top of each other and that way you get an outline of a wood. Or what you can do, if you want to make this even a little bit more controlled, we don't have the tool for that, but let me show you, just quickly show you set a um, tool for that. So I'm gonna do a copy of the city tree tool and start, instead call it city wood. And I'm gonna go for a set of a fractal circle, as I've said here under options, I'm gonna go for polygon path. And that way I can draw my polygon, my wood, as one entity. And there's my wood on the northwestern edge of the city. That's already looking pretty neat. And now I would start by uh, going in and labeling uh, my city. Good. Um, just checking whether we've got any more questions, but uh, Sue and Remy seem to be taking care of everything that comes up in the chat. So uh, we're good there. And I just wanted to show you a bit of uh, the labeling. So what I'm going to do, um, I am want to do a little bit of an automatic indexing uh, of the city. So I'm going to go in and make a black text. I'm going to put my text on the text layer. And then I'm going to put in my labels with a number and a full text here and zoom in a bit and center the text by hitting C and M, C for centered horizontally and M for middle vertically. Put it on the the spot where my label is, uh, um, is supposed to be. And let's put in, uh, that's the temple. And we've got a town hall. Now yeah, come on. Um, you might wonder why I'm overlapping the text here like this. Uh, I'm going to show you in a moment. I'm just uh, basically, I'm going to remove the main text later and just leave the, the numbers in. And for the so uh, then the number will in the be in the middle of that building. Uh, why I do that? Just to give me a sec. So I'm just going to put in for the for the north gate. And five for let's call that the farmer's gate. Oops, that was. Misclick or basically uh, mistype, hit the return too quickly. So we've got a circ garrison and a bit simply seven for the south gate and eight for the in. No, eight, not nine. Okay, then I do need a grid, so I'm going to put in a, a hex, a square grid with 50, uh, let's make it 40 feet to the grid. I want it labeled, 
letters in one direction and numbers in the other, labels outside, that's fine. Let's apply that. Here is our grid with the labels. Oh, we're a bit off here. Oh, something I would fix if I was uh, working more with that, but for now we'll keep it at this. This is fine. Or well, actually, perhaps the uh, the squares are a bit too small to be functional. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to redo this, draw hex or square overlay, but make it 100 feet by per square. That makes it much easier. Here we go. And now I want to create an index. And for that, I'm going to go into the city tools, city, create index. Now I'm going to ask, uh, select everything that I want to be indexed, and that's all my the text labels I've added. So I'm going to choose by entity type to read text. It does not choose the grid numbers, though they are text as well, but they are part of a group, and that's why they are not selected for this. Then I'm going to press D for do it. I want just one column, and then I'm going to place the index here. And you can see, um, actually, um, this turned out to go on buildings high. So what we're going to do, move to sheet, oops, move to sheet, select this and put it on the text. So we don't have the drop shadow on that. But it does list the building with its number and the grid, uh, the square it is on. And it does give us a link. I can click on the market here and then it's going to jump in here. And what I'm going to do now is going to go in, edit that text and remove everything but the, the number. Same for the town hall, same for the temple here. And this way I just left with the number on the map itself. I don't have the big labels in there, they are just in the index. But I do need to put it in first so the index knows what to put in it. Well, this is fairly quickly done. And just these two labels left. And this way we have the numbers on the on the map and the key index to the city on the right here. And I can always click on this, see for example on the in and it jumps to the location where my label is. Good. And uh, apart from that, we would just need to put in a, a title now and uh uh, perhaps a uh, scale bar and of course do some little bit more work on the buildings and the gardens and stuff. But we do have the main work of the city done already in an hour and I hope you liked what we did here tonight. As usual the, the video will be available for later viewing anytime you want on our YouTube channel and the live mapping playlist. And so you can always look stuff up later if you want to. Well, I hope you had a nice quick mapping hour, enjoyed this and uh, do your own mapping as you prefer, do your cities and your overland maps and your dungeons and share them in our community, in our forum or the Facebook group for everyone to see. That would be lovely, always great to see other people's works on the web. And uh, see you again next week. Have a good night and thanks for watching. All the best. Keep up the mapping. Bye-bye.